Hello there, welcome to news from Nepal Television. I am Smitu Kiseng Tamang. Let's begin with the top stories for this afternoon. Election Commission starts collecting temporary voters' name list from today, also appoints a returning officers. Zelensky says Russia must face just punishment over its invasion of Ukraine, calls for creation of a special war tribunal. U.S. Central Bank pushes interest rates to the highest level in 14 years. Asian markets tumble following the interest rate hike. And selection games under the C Division League kicking off from today. 60 aspiring clubs put in 20 different groups of three teams each. Welcome back the news in detail. Election Commission is starting collection of temporary voter list from today. It is going to collect and update the temporary voter list required for the election to be held according to the proportional election system under the House of Representatives member election. Voters included in the temporary voters list can only vote for the proportional election system for the House of Representatives. In this way, for the name to be included in the temporary voter list, the name must be included in the final vote voters list approved by the Commission. The list of provisional voters received on October 18 will be accepted and the electoral roll will be published in the relevant election office. On October 19 and 20, those whose names are omitted or there are errors in the published details will submit an application to correct the error. There is a schedule to publish the final provisional voter list on October 31st. Meanwhile, Election Commission has appointed judges of 77 districts as chief returning officers and Gazette second-class officials under judicial service as returning officers in the remaining 88 constituencies for the upcoming elections. The appointment will come into effect from September 27. Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deva has said that the operations of non-governmental and international non-governmental organizations operating in Nepal should be transparent. Addressing the 43rd Social Service Day ceremony, Prime Minister Deva emphasized on service there, serving the society with heart, speech and deed as social service is a sacred work. PM Deva also said there is a need for unity among all organizations across the country. In the program, Women, Children and Social Welfare Minister Uma Regmi said the non-governmental organizations will be mobilized according to national needs and policies. She also said that NGOs will be monitored and evaluated. Social Welfare Council's digital portal was also launched on the occasion of Social Service Day. Along with this, the compulsion to go to the Centre for Organisation, Registration and Renewal has come to an end, as now such work can be done online. Three persons have lost their lives when a massive fire engulfed a house at Lasuntar of Kapon in Kathmandu last evening. The deceased have been identified as the 27-year-old Kasang Tenji Sherpa, 32-year-old Ashok Rai and 25-year-old Chewang Sherpa. 28-year-old Kushal Buratuki has sustained injuries. The fire that broke at around 6.45 p.m. the day before was doused with the effort of security personnel, locals and fire tenders. Fire engines from Kathmandu, Lalitpur and Bhaktapur were also used to contain the fire. According to District Police Range Kathmandu, the fire erupted after portable cooking gas cylinders and portable oxygen cylinders kept at a mountain expedition company named Elit Himalayan Adventure. The damage details are being ascertained while investigation is underway, according to the police. Time for a break now. We'll be right back with more updates to stay tuned. Welcome back. Now the international update. Russia must face just punishment over its invasion of Ukraine, President Volodymyr Zelensky has told the UN General Assembly in New York. In a pre-recorded video, the, the Ukrainian leader called for the creation of a special war tribunal and detailed alleged war crimes by Russia. 
His address received a standing ovation from many of the session's attendees. He spoke on the same day Russian President Vladimir Putin called up 300,000 military reservists for duty, a move which prompted rare protests on the streets of Russia. Zelensky said the move showed his enemy was not serious about peace talks. The U.S. Central Bank has pushed interest rates to the highest level in almost 15 years as it fights to rein in soaring prices in the world's largest economy. Borrowing costs are expected to climb more and remain high, the bank said. The move comes despite mounting concern that the cost of controlling inflation could be a harsh economic downturn. Federal Reserve Chairman Zehom Powell said the rate rises were necessary to slow down demand, easing the pressures, putting up prices and avoiding long-term damage to the economy. But he considered that they will take a toll. South Korean markets have stumbled following the U.S. Federal Reserve's decision to raise its key interest rate by a substantial three-quarters of a point for a third straight time. The Korea Composite Stock Price Index opened at 2,319.70, down by 1.17 percent. The Taiwan stock market also opened down following stocks slump on Wall Street as Federal Reserve steps up inflation fight. time again for a short break. We shall see you at the other side with more updates. Welcome back. You're with English News on Nepal Television. More from International Front. Pons in southern Pio de Rucco is one of the towns badly hit by Hurricane Fiona. Heavy rains washed out roads and houses, leaving neighborhoods isolated without water and electricity. More than half a million people in Puerto Rico remained without water service on Wednesday, three days after Hurricane Fiona slammed into the U.S. territory. Fiona poured more. Fiona poured about 60 centimeters of rain in some areas of. Puerto Rico before blasting across the eastern Dominican Republic and the Turks and Caicos Island. Swelled to Category 4 force, the storm was on a track to pass close by Bermuda late Thursday or Friday and then hit easternmost Canada by late Friday, according to the U.S. National Hurricane Center. The storm wreaked havoc on Puerto Rico's power grid, which had been patched but never fully rebuilt after Hurricane Maria caused a blackout that lasted 11 months in some places in 2017. For the first time, a spacecraft will attempt to hit an asteroid to change its speed and trajectory. For that, NASA is about to clobber a small, harmless asteroid millions of miles away. A spacecraft named DART will zero in on the asteroid Monday, intent on slamming it head-on at 14,000 mph. The impact should be just enough to nudge the asteroid into a slightly tighter orbit around its companion space rock. It's the first save-the-world experiment of its kind. DART blasted off on a $325 million mission last November. More updates lined up by the other side, but before that, let's take a look at what we have coming up next. Now to sports. The selection games under the C Division League are starting from today. 60 aspiring clubs to get qualification to the C Division have been put in 20 different groups of three teams each. The selection games will be held at the and for complex at the battle. The winner of each group will enter the knock round after the group matches. 20 teams will be put in two groups of 10 clubs each in the knockout round, according to ANFA. And before we say goodbye, the headlines one more time.
Election Commission starts collecting temporary voters' name list from today, also appoints a returning officers. Zelensky says Russia must face just punishment over its invasion of Ukraine, calls for creation of a special war tribunal. The U.S. Central Bank pushes interest rates to the highest level in 14 years. Asian markets tumble following the interest rate hike. And selection games under the C Division League kicking off from today. 60 aspiring clubs put in 20 different groups of three teams each. This brings us to the end of our news bulletin. We shall be back with the next one at 6 this evening. Till then, goodbye. Namaste.